Hello, Faya. Thank you for doing this today. I'm so grateful to have you here. Uh, Faya, for those listening, is a student of Akatora Whanui, but also a embodiment, embodiment expert and wisdom keeper, I feel. Uh, she teaches me a lot and pushes on my remembering often when we have discussions around the codes that we hold as women and the deepening of our process of being. So I'm super grateful to have you here today. Thank you. Yeah, I feel really honored and humbled to be in this space today. I normally begin these by asking you how you would describe yourself and that can be from a cultural standpoint or from a woman's standpoint or however you feel called to express who you be. Um, I'm deeply passionate about liberating the ways in which we express ourselves and invite all the aspects of ourselves to be in a space of celebration, to be witnessed in rawness and fullness. This web reaches out into embodiment work and ritual and dances out into yeah, the Romi Romi practice and everything that that entails with the ancient wisdom that is passed on through that space. It, it sparks and ignites my being like nothing else. And this connects into like tantric wisdom and practices and um, working with different archetypes and yeah, journeying down all the paths of soul initiation, which I feel for me personally. Rami Rami has been a massive step in that sense because it's just aligned me so powerfully with my soul purpose <laughs> and just taken me down this path of, of initiation to rise up and to meet the divine and to harness this, this energy, this life force energy that moves through us, that breathes us, that connects, that that magnifies the beauty that we are, that we see reflected in everyone. And I feel like there's a pivotal turning point when we start to bring that down and to bring it down into the body, into the felt sensations and doing this embodiment work, this integration work. Yeah, bringing it into the body, we start living and breathing this as our own unique life force energy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love that description and it's not something I always talk about in terms of my own journey, but I've really found that that feminine and tantric work is such a core part of like us becoming women and integrating and aligning and it's not always a topic in Māori tanga that we have embraced, but mm -hmm. that it's so beautiful when we can hold that space in that way as well. So mm -hmm. totally, I think that's one of the things where I've felt quite resonant in terms of witnessing your work and seeing how those aspects of you weave with, with the cultural practice as well. It's really beautiful. Okay. Can you share with us what perhaps initially drew you to Domi Domi or Māori healing? I felt the calling to, yeah, find a modality that resonated with me in a way that I felt I could express what has been so deeply seated within me. And it was only really when I stumbled acro across um, Rami Rami. Yeah, there was just this like, fuck yes, from my heart. <laughs> yeah, it, it started already like the first time that I stepped into the training space. I was having like insane visions, like as though I'd already dreamt everything before this. Remembering, like this energy that was guiding me took me back to when I was a young girl and I would have these sensations because I was always very like, you know, intuitive and, and connected to the unseen realms. This ancient family watching over me. So like my own guides, um, that I would sometimes just catch a glimpse of someone's eye and see that. 
and I would feel this sensation wash over me. Yeah, I remember when Matua Pena was doing his karakia for the training to open. I just had this intense energy of like, oh my God, they're here with me. Like, <laughs> and it's crossing all the logical boundaries of like, you know, I'm as a non-Maori, you know, there's this question of like, how connected can I actually be? Like how much of the deep connection that I feel to this wisdom, to these ancestor spirits that are guiding this work. And, and just, it, it's just a full body resonance in me. Mm. And like my own personal remembrance has been interweaving through this work. So it's just been, mm. yeah, phenomenally empowering. <laughs> uh, and for those who maybe don't know, can you describe what it, when you say codes or Mary Magdalene codes, mm. what does that mean? Yeah, I feel like on this, Mm, you could call it like a spiritual journey. Um, I feel like there are different stages that we move through where different aspects of ourselves awaken to who we are. And so many different things can trigger that. Like the way I see it is we have so many different blueprints that we're working with. So I have like a lineage blueprint. I have an ancestral blueprint. I have past life blueprint. I have my own like you know, embodied kind of like my own childhood blueprint and the parents and the structures that I grew up with in society. More like subtle blueprints that we're not as conscious of. Um, we're doing work with a lot with the, with the subconscious. And so we're going into the mystery, going into the unseen, going into these parts of us that we... It's like we're taking the light of our awareness and descending into the subconscious to shine our light. Sometimes it's almost like you're just taking different grains of sand and like separating them. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it looks like. And other times it'll be like, you know, dying a massive death, like it can be an explosion, like the ending of a relationship or the ending of a period in your life where you're like, no, this actually is not serving anymore. I'm breaking the cycle. And then what happens is a certain part of us awakens and steps into more fullness. So we actually feel like you actually feel in your body like, oh, I can, I can actually move this part of me that I wasn't aware of. Like I've been numb in this part of me and I haven't known that until I've awakened it, it's become sensitized. And all of a sudden I have so much more like, mobility in this aspect of me and because all our bodies are connected and everything we experience is connected to itself like on a microcosm and on the macrocosm at large one of many things but essentially one of two things it can be a vibrational match for the dormant aspect in others or it can be a vibrational match for the awakened and activated aspect in others and i feel like i find that with teachers or with people that we're working with like mentors um often this is this is interesting when it, when it comes into like clients and, and business and our life's work um we will always be a match for the people that are seeking that to activate these parts in themselves because we've activated these aspects in us and the same when we're seeking um support and mentorship from someone like we will be recognizing and resonating with the activated parts in them because this part of us is so yearning to be activated which then leads on to like another another part which is um protection and energetic hygiene which i think is mm. a huge part of this work yeah can you speak a little to that in terms of uh how you see both the importance but also some of the practices that you use for that? I brush my teeth twice a day. I take showers most days and I have little rituals to do like physical hygiene, right? And, and nobody ever taught us about energetic hygiene. Nobody ever taught us about how important it is to have an energetically clear space. And so when we're doing this more like subtle work with, with the unseen realms, 
I find, like, I have a lot of grief for the ways in which I've seen people operate, um, where they open up these amazing portals, right, and they connect to higher beings and they do all this, like, really profound out there work. But because it's not anchored in to a safe container, mm. it can actually hold that energy, can hold that frequency, um, then other energies can just infiltrate and, and then it gets murky and then, you know, anything can kind of come from that. And something that I really feel is embodied through the work that you do, um, that I've learned a lot from in, in the training is that kind of energetic hygiene that is so important. <laughs> like, I just can't stress how important it is. Like I have even just consciously asking for protection is like setting an intention. It's saying, I'm aware that I'm opening a container here. And just that awareness allows you to step so much more fully into this space and to be contained in that space. It comes down even to the, the dance between the masculine and the, and the feminine. Like you can't really have one without the other. Like the feminine wants to open up and, and express herself and, and be in her fullness, but she needs the masculine to, cont to contain her. She needs like the, and, and this is like archetypal kind of stuff. It's not woman and man necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but it obviously expresses itself through that as well. And it's like, even before hopping on this call, like I have to sit with myself, even if it's just for 10 minutes, just to say like, I'm consciously entering this space and I'm going to clear my system so that I'm not bringing in any energies that don't need to be here. Ultimately, I feel like our movement is to turn the, the mundane into ritual, is to turn the human experience into so deeply sacred that there isn't a moment of our lives that we're living that isn't fully contained in its divinity. So that is the integration ultimately between the masculine and the feminine poles. Yeah, I love that. And even though, like you said, it, it can be a far, off exp a far off concept, it also isn't. Like we actually touch that reality that we are the ceremony in that process. And even in that opening our awareness to look at like, what what spaces am I stepping into? Who am I being in that space? What's my intention? All those little things actually remind us that we are the ceremony in seeing how energy does shift when we set that intention or what can be as quick as a breath. You know, it can be like, <sighs> before we walk into a space, it, it doesn't always need to be long, but sometimes it needs to be as well. Sometimes we've been running from this thing to that thing and we do need to have that that space or as you say someone's white always visiting you telling you what you need to do to prepare clearing an acknowledgement of both the difference between like nor and tapu the everyday and the sacred but also the sameness of that for you for people who don't know what romiromi is would you describe it oh i love this <laughs> <laughs> and i've never come across another modality that integrates so much that that meets all these all these parts of us and I for me like it really connects into the ancientness it's like the earth is ancient she moves with really slow rhythms that you barely even notice but her transformation is beyond what we're able to perceive there's something about, there's almost like this daringness in Romy Romy, this like, this little rebel <laughs> that comes through that really gets you where it hurts. Like she really gets into your deepest like woundings where you're like, no, I've had enough. Like I can't, no, no. And, and she just, she just breaks through. What Romy Romy, opens within a person is so vast in essence it's really just an invitation and and it works with the body it works with the most dense aspect of us so it creates these shifts and it anchors them 
into the body where so much of what we do is like from from the higher energy centers it being a healing modality that's been passed on through generations of Maori healers what Romi Romi offers is a ladder well it's it's like a multi-dimensional ladder because it's not just up and down <laughs> um but a multi-dimensional ladder between the most dense aspect of ourselves and the much lighter aspects of ourselves and the interconnectedness between them. For me, like there's almost like these two directions that we move in, almost like the death, like the clearing, the releasing, the purging, the letting go, and then the rebirth, which is anchoring in, creating, sowing the seeds for the new, new life essentially activation then you literally see like there are these two chords that are constantly intertwining um and it's it's connected to this much larger process that we're going through as a collective and as individuals where our remembering is this this shedding this shedding of skins this peeling away of layers and at the same time this deepening of what it means to really be in the fullness of who we are you know we all receive the medicine that we're ready to receive it can be a terrifying process to some extent um but you just land back into your body so deeply held so deeply nurtured yeah you just like almost come out like another person mm -hmm. oh. I love those descriptions. My brain was firing in so many different directions as well, <laughs> just speaking. Because <laughs> it, is, it is that aspect. I, I love the description of the, the inner rebel because that, that is, in a way, one of the archetypes we need to step into sometimes when we're holding space is like, I can feel you don't want to go there, but we need to. <laughs> like that, and we're trusting that higher messaging. When, you, when I witness the body, at least, it's like there's that tiny bit of resistance, which seems like this wall's really thick, but then it just dissolves. Mm. And, and it's just like, from there, it's more like we're floating in the ancestral sea, or that, that's the words that's coming, but in a sea of that ancientness that's allowing us to move on that level. And it, it's such a beautiful and humbling experience to hold space for. So thank you for voicing that. This is the deep soul initiation work that, that we're ready to do. Like as healers today, I feel in so many ways, we're charting new territories. Like we're literally birthing new languages for humanity, calling in so much of this ancient wisdom that needs to be shared on this planet right now it needs to be offered in true soul devotion like holding this 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 pillar it's like the priestess energy it's this space holding from a new paradigm we're not here to save anyone from their own process someone needs to 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 die their death they're gonna die their death and and because We've been taught not to be comfortable with un other people having uncomfortable feelings. We feel like we're supposed to be intervening and like making sure that they're okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like, no, what, what we're being asked here is, is to be a pillar for someone to die. Mm -hmm. it's, it's this like, <sighs> yeah, how, how much can you really stay in your power? in in sacred non-interference when someone is is literally collapsing and 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 burning and turning into ashes because it's only from that space where the new self will rise like a phoenix in the flame the true self reveals itself we're literally at a time where nothing else will do <laughs> we can't we can't afford to to do this like nice airy fairy kind of fluffy rainbows and sunshine. On that note around being non Māori, how does that, for you, how do you, I guess, aim to honour and witness that 
that dance as well of, of a Māori practice as a non-Māori person or is it something that plays in? Yeah, it's interesting. Like I've definitely worked with the beliefs or judgments of like feeling a bit like an imposter, like I can barely say a few words and here I am like carrying this sacred lineage of work. Um, and it just, yeah, it really comes down to, to the deep reverence that I hold for this practice. And in ritual space with intention, like so deeply honoring the ancestors and the keepers of the wisdom that enables me to actually stand here today and practice this work. It's such a different experience practicing on Modi and non Modi. For me, Personally, when I practice with Modi, it feels like a deeper initiation into the work mm. because it feels like I'm working with, with the earth and the blood and the sweat. Yeah, it's, it, it, it anchors in this deeper sense of purpose. In fact, it also you know, brings up my own um, observation of where it is that my lineage does take me because it's almost like up until I hadn't been initiated by Papa Tuanuku, it's like my own connection to the land was severed. Like I didn't feel like I had a connection to any land because I grew up in a few different countries and I spoke a few different languages and my lineage is like all over the place. But it's really from you know, learning about the culture, learning about the connection to the land through Māori, that I have created my own connection to my own lineage and to, you know, Buddha that I, that I was born on, that I was raised on. And, you know, starting to learn Nunga and, and honouring not just the, the Māori ancestry, and keepers of the wisdom, but also the, the ancestors of this land and the custodians of this land that I'd always felt, you know, because of the history and because of unspeakable trauma that's been caused to the people of this land, I felt my own umbilical cord being completely severed from this land. Working with Romi Romi has really begun to like, open me up to a new way of relating to the sacredness and the ancientness of this land. Yeah, yeah and thank so, you for sharing that as well, because I, well, for me as a trainer, like I feel as though I witness those of you who are non-Maldi that you're really powerful as healers and you have your own textures of practicing mm -hmm. that are, are somewhat different from how I would practice or um, some of my teachers would practice, but it's still so potent. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it is, there are some of those discussions still around um, cultural background that are present. And, and I, my intention as a trainer would never be to place you in an uncomfortable position by any means, yet I know deeply where all your hearts are your willingness to learn and listen and expand and pull in your own lineages and that just warms me up <laughs> so much so yeah really honor you for answering that question and uh it's i'm sure a dance that i will continue to have in terms of doing this work as well and even practicing on the Buddha and my deep respect for Aboriginal culture that I could, I'll never be able to understand precisely and the aim of as being a healer on this land what our responsibilities are and how did you um, find Akutoro Whanui as a course? I want to do it again <laughs> yeah it just felt like home a, a space that you step into and you feel like every single part of you is welcome yeah the way that you hold a transmission for this ancient knowledge with you know everything that all the work that you've done on your personal journey to integrate and to 
yeah, both honour and and be a keeper of this ancient wisdom and then also know where exactly it's time to open up more space, where the world is at right now, what humanity really needs right now. I feel that just all the work that you've done on your personal journey is so felt in in the training um which which feels like you know it's not just about the training and and what's being taught it's like that's that's what i'm talking about like in terms of of the codes and awakening like i think every person who steps into that training feels feels that deep calling as a healer yeah i just thoroughly enjoyed the training i enjoyed creating connections with with such beautiful people and sharing our experiences and being you know from such diverse backgrounds that makes my whole body smile (laughs) (laughs) for me it really does feel important to empower each person to ride their energy that they're here to activate the planet with and Mm -hmm. even that recognition of what i am calling it is an activation of the healers who are ready in terms of we've flown around in a few different places with the Domi Domi and the embodiment, and I see them as the same thing, but then also there's other practices that support that flow or that we can share with people to activate them more. In terms of when people are maybe like deeply in their emotional body and mm-hmm. not sure how to move that, what, what sort of practices would you recommend? Can you move into that? Can you actually really lean? into what you're feeling and the body cannot lie especially as women like our heightened emotional sensitivity we have been taught is a burden but like it's our friggin compass (laughs) like we know exactly where we're at because our feelings our felt sensations do not lie to us and the more we step into the body and and allow ourselves to feel you know like we can be in the midst of a storm in the most uncomfortable place or we can be laughing our heads off having like orgasmic movement flowing through us and we get to feel it all yeah i feel that any kind of like movement breath dance putting on the music that that really like meets you where you're at and just letting Handing it over for a moment, really just letting the body decide (laughs) how it wants to move that energy. I feel, yeah, that's been a big, big thing for me. For someone who maybe feels like fear to voice that that wants to come out or to move in a way that uh, they haven't moved before, like, is there a way to support that? Meeting ourselves in those places is terrifying like it it can literally just like make all our systems freeze like I know with my own personal stories and my wounding and my childhood and all these things when when I am asking myself to drop in deeper sometimes like I just I just fall asleep I cannot like I go so numb and dissociate I just can't be in whatever tries to express itself will just completely shut down. And I find that it's then where we want to really just tune in and see what it is that we need. Deep breaths and, you know, you can imagine calling in an aspect of yourself. So it can be like, okay, the aspect of of myself that wants to run away right now um can I create like a container for it right now just imagine like actually put a pillow in front of me and say you can sit down on this pillow and like tell me what you need from me in this moment and it might just be a nap and it might be a meal and it might be be, like to have a conversation and share what's happening and it might be to go for a walk in nature and it might be to journal that in itself is ritual. It's, it's actually coming into presence and showing up for yourself because I feel like we can't do any of this work if we're not showing up for ourselves. Mm. We're not 
firstly saying like, can, can I just stop for a moment and, and close my eyes and ask myself, what do I need in this moment? You know, the more in tune we are to where we're at, because we've been taught to like have this disconnect between what we're actually feeling and what we're doing and what we're presenting. Yeah, just stepping into this connection with our inner self, with the emotional body, with the other subtle bodies. In my head, when you speak of this, I'm like, one is the importance of doing that work as a healer, and I'm just going to pinpoint that. <laughs> but the other bit is that it's one of those contrary pieces of this path and that the more embodied we are, the more of that repressed emotionality or grief or, or trauma comes to the surface to be felt in its journey outwards. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we can feel that I can't, well, for me, at least in my journey in the past, I've felt like, oh, I can't do healing or whatever because this thing is happening, but it's actually because I'm becoming more embodied that that thing is happening, not because I'm, I hear people all the time tell me they're going backwards or oh, I'm just going backwards. It's like, you can never go backwards. Like you're actually more in touch with yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And that then on the piece with, of, of as a healer doing your own work, how important do you feel that is? There is a slippery part there that can be like holding a certain idea of what I'm supposed to look like as a healer and how that's supposed to look what it means to have, you know, this, this way that I work with myself and having it down, like I got this, you know, um, this in itself is the initiation. Like we want to make sure that we're not allowing this idea of how we operate as healers to be another way to like spiritually bypass ourselves. The new world that we are creating will be the ones to almost like collapse into the deepest wounds first, <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm. Because I feel like what kind of makes us healers in a way is we're most conscious of our wounds. Otherwise we wouldn't be doing this work. We're most conscious of what needs healing and we all our healers, <laughs> I think it's, it's embedded into us. And when we begin to step into this power as the healer, we recognize that our pain, our grief, our suffering, all of these aspects of ourselves that are so uncomfortable have taken us to the depths of who we are. They've created the depths of who we are. They've allowed us to to be so mm, connected almost like this well of medicine that is asking to be poured forth into the world into us and and you know we can't do this if we don't continually show up for the parts of us that are still asking for healing. Mm. It's like they go hand in hand and it's so easy for the mind to try and rationalize it and say like, no, if, if, if you got this, then you can't have this. <laughs> They're separate. And, and you know, um, totally. And as you were speaking, it's almost as though that journey to be able to go to those depths with someone else, we have to be able to go to those depths with ourselves. Otherwise we're not going to be able to really, journey there for them as you know holding space while they go there it's like the whole when you we described Romiromi earlier around the whole spectrum of where it travels down and then up it's like that's the journey we're going as well on mm -hmm. our own like on an individual but also as a collective that all of us are like really clearing that and each individual's piece pulls into it mm -hmm. is there anything else on your heart to share at all as we begin to collect. In its essence, this journey is, it isn't taking us to, to this like transcendental place of 
like divine union that that exists in these higher realms like <laughs> because I feel that yeah so many in in the spiritual community seek for that and I feel like that's that's such an important part of the seeking process I just so value that point at which we start turning it back down and bringing it into like you know how can we release our idea of transcendence and and invite in the descent the descent into the depths and there will be shadows there there will be parts of us that we will not want to accept but that's where the work happens and that's what we're showing up for and it can be yeah the most terrifying thing inviting in the aspects of ourselves that we've suppressed and denied and and left out of the picture because they haven't been comfortable for us Mm. and reclaiming them honoring them celebrating them Mm. Mm. that's what all this work is here for for me thank you so much for all that you be and all the words you've spoken today they land on a really deep level with me and I couldn't have spoken them better myself. <laughs> Especially around the middle of me and everything that it holds. Uh, for those who may want to connect with you for a session or anything like that, uh, what are your social media or where um, you want to guide people? Reach out on Instagram. Uh, Wild Mystic Musing is my account name. <laughs> and just shoot me a message. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for taking the time. And would you like to close for us? Just got the the sun. It's beautiful. It's actually been changing really beautifully as you've <laughs> gone along. <sighs> so taking in a few deep breaths here, feeling the center of our bodies, the central connection. Feeling the heat and the vibrancy, the luminosity at the core of our beings when we exchange and we connect, when we are ignited by the same familiar resonance that we know ourselves to be. And from that place, reaching down into the earth and sending our deepest love and gratitude for holding us in this space. And as we close this sacred container, taking a deep, full body breath, Sending our deepest love and gratitude to ourselves for showing up and trusting, for surrendering. Thank you. Mm. Thank you.